Today, by the grace of Allah, we are starting uh, Surah Al-Kahf, one of the most often recited surahs in Islamic tradition. Uh, that is based obviously upon the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And obviously, what is the day, the preferred day of reciting the surah? All of you know, Friday. So a lot of mufassirun, a, tr- a huge, overwhelming number of mufassirun, when they start talking about the surah, they talk about its merits from the from the Sunnah point of view. Um, and they also, one of, you know, of the many benefits it has, uh, the one that's highlighted quite a bit is that it protects us from the fitna of Dajjal. That it offers some sort of protection for the greatest trial that will fall uh, upon this ummah and actually upon humanity. Uh, the chapters in the books of a hadith, Al-Malahim Al-Uzma, Al-Malhamat Al-Uzma, the, the English version of that or the biblical term used is Armageddon, you know, the great war between good and evil. Right, um, and so Allah Azza wa Jal in this surah is going to offer us some sort of protection for this ummah, uh, according to the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, from that fitna. And so we're going to have to look at this surah like Manazir Hassan Gilani, a great Indian scholar who wrote about this uh, surah and some of its teachings. Um, he argued actually that this, the teachings, the lessons of this surah, the Prophet didn't just tell us to recite this alayhi salatu wasalam. So we could be safe from the fitna of the Jal. The teachings of the surah have a lot to do with how to deal with that fitna. It actually deals with and responds to some of the great trials that are going to fall upon the world. And we'll, we'll talk about that today in the introduction, inshallah. In this particular surah, لِيُنذِرَ So that the book may warn. It also may mean so that Allah may warn. بَأْسًا shadidan Of an intense war. بَأْس means difficulty. بَأْس can also be used for economic trouble, social trouble. And in the worst case scenario, it can mean war, like harb. But it's, you know, awsa' min al-harb. Al-kalima awsa' min al-harb fil ma'na. Harb is literally war itself. But it says everything surrounding war, the economic troubles, the social troubles. It may come to warn of an intense war. The way he structures this language, there's, this war is unavoidable because it's a divine decree. It's going to happen. And it's especially from him. So if he's prepared the intense war himself, that it's going to happen, then you need to be warned about it. You need to be warned about it. Most traditional tafasir, when they say, what war is Allah talking about? They talk about the end of times. They talk about the the, the, the Jal and Isa alayhi salam, and all of the kutub al ahwal, not ahwal, ahwal, calamities, catastrophes that are going to take place. The huge, huge wars that are going to take place. The massacres of human beings that are going to take place. That this book came to warn about that. At the same time, when you warn, you should mention who is it going to warn. Right? So if I say, for example, Unziru, I say, Unziru kum, I'm warning who? All of you. You're, you're the mufrul bihi. So there's two things. Unziru kum ba'san shadidan. I'm warning you of a great war. Fine. Now there are two objects. I'm warning you. Who am I warning? And what am I warning about? There's two objects. How many objects are in the warning in the ayah? لِيُنْذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا One. وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Oh. And the, on the other side is congratulations. And it came to congratulate, but when it came to congratulations, who was mentioned? Believers. Mu'mineen are mentioned. This is beautiful. There's just several things. And I don't want to get too technical with you guys in the beginning, because this translation series, not like literary analysis series. But one thing here is, warning is for the kuffar in Makkah and Qur'an, and good news is for the believers. I'm warning you, you better be on the right side when that war comes. But Allah didn't even honor the kuffar by mentioning them, but He honored the believers by mentioning them. He didn't even mention their name. لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا بِاللَّهُ وَيُبَشِّرْ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ He qualified them. He mentioned them. That's an honor of the believers. The other thing also is, the warning is open to all. The warning, I mean the, the, the threat of a war, should Muslims and non-Muslims equally be afraid? Absolutely. But when it comes to congratulations, who's the congratulations really for? The believers. And within the believers, when those times arrive, it's not going to be enough that you call yourself a believer. You're going to have to meet the qualification, الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَةِ Those who act righteously. It's qualified as, a, as an adjective. As though the word al-mu'min in and of itself isn't even enough in this, in this case, in this crazy case. أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا hasana That they're going to have a, a, a great compensation. A beautiful compensation. And by the way, what is that great compensation? 
When Allah says, Anna lahu majran hasanan, is that dunya or akhira? It's akhira. So when the warning came, it was of dunya. When the good news came, it was of akhira. That's kind of amazing. Because the believers are told, those times are so tough, don't expect anything in dunya. Those times are going to be so bad, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to congratulate you of dunya good, good stuff. I'm just going to give you ajran hasana, and you're going to work towards that. So you might not even see the physical, material, worldly consequences of your good deeds. You might not see things getting any better. But that should not deter you from keeping, doing your, keeping on and go, doing your good deeds, because your rewards are not going to be here, especially in those times. They're going to be in the end of times. They're going to be after that. They're going to be in the akhirah.